a resemblance of romance. We're not told a precise reason why God makes man. You get several hints throughout the word of God. But God says, let's make man in our image. And after he makes man, the first thing he notices is that this equation doesn't work on its own. At this creation we've made in our image, and by the way, God is plural, and he's had the capacity for fellowship between his three persons for all of eternity. But Adam doesn't have anyone like him. There's a long and silly story, in my opinion. I mean, can you imagine? Is that giraffe? Is that giraffe look like something you could uh, settle down with? That uh, millipede, does that look like, you know, the kind of thing you could take home to mom? And there's no such thing as mom at that point in history. Um, it's ridiculous, because it only leads to Adam needs someone like him. God makes someone like him in his image because he wants a holy, spiritually intimate relationship with a people. And then he makes for, as if the parallel is really obvious, Adam a helpmeet that is like him, with whom he can be intimate. And I mean intimate in the most well-rounded, holistic sense you can imagine. Why is this clear to me? It's not my choice. You don't have to look hard in the Word of God to see that God is saying, I want you to look at these two things and see them as analogous to each other. God's desire for a bride and your desire for a spouse. God is saying, I want you to see the one thing and the other. See this and that and see the other thing. See them as mirrors to each other. And we see something about the heart and intention of God. We see something about the gospel. When we are seemingly at sea, in the difficulties and confusion of, well, obviously there's the difficulty and confusion of being married. There's the difficulty and confusion of not being married. But both of those share a sense that God has put something in you that is focused on this idea of relationship. Uh, specifically, the kind of intimacy, spiritual and otherwise. God's intimacy with us is spiritual. But it should be telling us something about God. Now the exhortation I really want to give you is that when you are a sea in that ocean, um, and there's an ocean of confusion that comes from being married. There's an ocean of confusion that comes from being not married. There's an ocean of confusion that comes from being divorced. But nonetheless, the equation is always about the desire for a relationship with the person who is there or not there, or used to be there, or is going to be there someday. Understand that God put that in you to show you something about himself. Now, as much as you want someone to give you time or energy or affection or someone to listen to or be listened to, consider the needs of God. Consider that he made us... Um, grow into relationship with him. And you know, you think of God having given so much to us and we couldn't possibly pay him back. 
but I think he's saying, I want your closeness. I want your spiritual intimacy. And I think you only have to look as far as your own internal wiring to see that I'm like that too. So your desire for human intimacy is a picture of God's desire for spiritual intimacy. May God bless you. If I have blessed you, encouraged you, or equipped you, please like and subscribe.